Hi everybody, Dr. A here, and in this video, we're gonna be exploring an example of how to analyze a statically indeterminate beam using the force method. So let's take a look at what we're given. We are being asked to compute AY, the vertical reaction at A, at the roller using the force method. And then we're being told that the flexural rigidity, which is EI, the product of E times I is constant for this beam. So what we have here is a propped cantilever beam. And that's one where one end is propped up by a roller and the opposite end is a fixed connection. This beam is 20 feet long and it is supporting a linearly increasing load or a linearly varying load that starts at zero at the roller at A and increases to 50 PLF at the fixed connection at B, okay? So how do we get this process started? Well, the first thing we're gonna do when we write solution is we're gonna confirm that this is in fact statically indeterminate and we're gonna be able to confirm it's statically indeterminate to the first degree. So the way we do that is we can draw the real system, real system, which is exactly what we're given, but I'm gonna draw it in free body diagram form. And that's gonna show us an AY at the roller. And at the uh, fixed connection, we're gonna have a BY, a BX, and an M sub B. And then across the span, we have this um, linearly varying load applied to it. So this is our real system and we see that we have four external support reactions. So we're gonna say R equals four, and we have one member, which is just the member AB, so N equals one. And then we can say R minus three N equals four minus three times one, which is one, and that is what we call the degree of indeterminacy, D sub I. If you're a little rusty on determining um, degrees of indeterminacy, you can check out one of my other videos where I talk a lot more about that with some uh, examples of that. So when you have something that's statically indeterminate to the first degree, what does that mean? Well, that means that we need one additional relationship in addition to the three applicable equilibrium equations, okay? That relationship is what's called the compatibility equation. Okay, now that compatibility equation is going to be based on defining one of these external reactions as what we call the redundant, okay? So it's called a redundant because you have one additional support reaction in addition to the three support reactions that you need to satisfy equilibrium and stability. So that extra reaction is redundant. It's in addition to what you really need for stability and equilibrium. So how do you choose a redundant? Well, if you watch the previous video, you choose a redundant that will give you what's called a primary system that is both statically determinate and stable. And more specifically for us, we're gonna choose AY as the redundant because if we choose AY as the redundant, we can solve for it directly using our compatibility equation. And that's, the, that's what the problem asked for was, was AY. So let's write this down. Let's say let's choose AY as the, I'm gonna say redund for short, but as the redundant, so we can solve for it directly using our compatibility equation. So I'm gonna select AY as my redundant, and that's gonna allow me to draw what's called the primary system. So what does the primary system look like? Well, it looks kind of like the real system, except I'm removing 
the reaction a y. I'm taking it away. I'm removing its effect completely. I am keeping on this primary system, however, the real loads, which is this triangularly shaped load that goes from 0 to 50 PLF, and our span is still 20 feet, okay? Now, when I load the primary system with the real loads and the, uh, the AY reaction has been removed, the, real, the primary system will be able to deflect kind of like, oop, skip around. The primary system will be able to deflect kind of like this. Let me draw that a little bit better for us. There we go. The free end, which is point A, which is where the roller is in the real system, will deflect by an amount delta A. So how do we calculate delta A? Well, we use these deflection methodologies that we've learned already uh, in, in previous knowledge. So that could be using the double integration method, or uh, it could just be using um, a pre-derived formula. If you have a textbook, um, a mech, mech, mech materials or a structural analysis textbook handy. So that's what I'm going to use. Instead of using a whole method like the double integration method, I'm going to just refer to um, a source that has the these equations already ready-made for me. So I'm going to say delta A equals WL to the fourth over 30 EI, okay? So W is going to be the applied real load, 50 PLF, and so that's going to give me 50 PLF times 20 feet to the fourth power over 30 EI. Now if you punch that in your calculator, you will get 266,667 pound feet cubed over EI. And yeah, you, you don't know what EI is. We, we just said EI is constant. That's okay. You just keep it inside of that uh, deflection expression. And the numerator, the 266,667, is carrying the units pound feet cubed. And this thing is deflecting downwards in our primary system. We're going to do a similar thing with our redundant system now. So we're going to call this next thing redundant system. And the redundant system is going to look a lot like the primary system. It's going to be a cantilever beam that's fixed at uh, point B, but we are going to not include any of the real loads. Instead, we are going to place on it a Y. So we are going to put a Y on this redundant system like it is uh, an applied load. We're treating a Y like it's an applied load. And when we do that, the redundant system is going to deflect like this. It's going to deflect upwards by an amount equal to delta prime a a. Okay. Now when it deflects upward by an amount equal to delta prime a a, we need to calculate that. Now, how do we do that? Well, again, I'm going to use one of my pre-derived formulas and I'm going to say, delta prime AA is equal to PL cubed over 3EI. And you can find this formula in pretty much any structural analysis or mechanics and materials textbook or online. Now, P is an applied load at the free end of a cantilever beam. So for us, P is AY. So I'm going to write this now as AY times 20 feet cubed over 3 EI. This is going to come out to be 2,667 feet cubed times AY all over E times I. Again, we don't have values for E and I, but that's okay. Uh, we just keep EI in that denominator there and we just leave it alone. Um, the, the 2,667 comes from 20 cubed divided by three and AI is, AY is still hanging out there in that numerator. Now we're gonna set up our compatibility equation, okay? So our compatibility equation is gonna basically relate these two deflections at point A. So we have the deflection 
uh, from the primary system, which was delta A downwards. And then we have this deflection in the redundant system, which is delta prime AA, and that's actually going upwards, okay? So when we set up this compatibility equation, we can call things pointing up positive, and that's gonna let us uh, write delta, negative delta A plus delta prime AA equals zero. And the reason why it equals zero is because in reality, in the real beam, point A does not move. Point A cannot move up or down, okay? It's restrained by the roller from the real system at point A. So we can substitute uh, these expressions in here. So we have negative 266,667 pound feet cubed over EI plus 2,667 feet cubed times AY over EI, and that equals zero. So that's our compatibility equation. And since the right side of that equation equals zero, we can clearly see that the EIs cancel and the feet cubed cancel. So we can do some rearranging here and we can solve directly for AY. So if you uh, solve for AY, then you all you do is you just say 266,667 divided by 2,667. And of course, you just get a nice even 100 pounds. And because it comes out positive, that means that AY is reacting in the direction that we assumed in the redundant system right here, okay? So that is our answer, but we need to make sure we understand why this is our answer and how it works. So let's make a couple of notes and observations here. AY is acting up since we assumed it was acting up in the redundant system and our calcs gave us a positive value. Okay, if our calcs came out negative, then AY would have actually been reacting downwards. So uh, that's pretty much the end of this example. One other comment I wanna make is, what if we wanted all of the other reactions? What if we wanted BY, MB, and BX? Could we solve for them now? Absolutely, we could, since we now know one of the four originally unknown reactions. So I'm gonna make a note here. I'm gonna say we could solve for the rest of the reactions, which are at point B, using equilibrium equations, okay? Uh, originally, we could not because we had four unknowns and you only have three applicable equilibrium equations, but now you have solved for one of those unknowns, that's AY, using the compatibility equation. So we could go ahead and solve for the uh, remaining um, unknown external support reactions if we wanted to, but the problem didn't ask us to, so we're going to stop right here, and that's going to conclude this video. If this was helpful to you, please hit like and subscribe.